Daddy! Show your face, Dad, for one second. Okay, wait. Wave or something. Do something. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's great. Thank you. I'm calling to tell you something, okay? Tell me. I'm thinking that me, Hampus, and Charlie are going to come next week. Ladies and gentlemen. You guys ready? It's time to buckle up. Are you ready? It's time for Pitcast. Tjena, tjena och välkomna till ett nytt avsnitt av Pitcast från The Sunny State of North Carolina. Yes! Nej men för jag tänkte också så här, för att lite anledning också varför vi ville komma ut och göra det här är för att jag tror många inte har sett min amerikanska familj. Alltså det har ju varit med lite på Lila Hand och tidigare så här serier eller ja, whatever, mm. sånt. Men jag vill i alla fall visa det lite för att jag tror folk inte riktigt, eh, ja jag vet inte, folk verkar vara intresserade av det så att ja. Uh, och sen så nu tänkte jag att vi skulle köta avsnitt med min farsa Och det är faktiskt nästa gästen idag mm. Det är min farsa uh, Jag tror inte det är så många som vet så mycket Om min farsa faktiskt uh, Hur som helst, vi har i alla fall farsan här Så jag tänker att vi plockar in han Och sen så, så kör vi igång helt enkelt Och för er som då tittar på hemma i Sverige så kommer det här avsnittet vara på engelska. För att, ja, jag tror det kommer bli väldigt svårt för er att förstå det här om jag ska ta det på svenska med pappa. För han pratar inte speciellt bra svenska. Jag tror det kommer bli <laughs> väldigt svårt. Men vi kan testa lite, men det kommer nog bli på engelska. Men hur som helst så tycker jag att det är dags att ta illa. Vi, vi har fått in den nu äntligen. Så att, ja, right, vi, vi kör vi. igång. Welcome in Mason. Welcome right. in. Come in. Have a seat dad. How's it feel? Hey. What's up, man? How's it going? It's good. How are you? Good. Great. I mean, you, you've, uh, we finally got you on. Yes, finally. Finally. It's about time. This has been a long time coming, pretty much. It has. It's been, and you guys have been so busy, too. I yeah, know. I know. Yeah. And now that you've been here, uh, I can see firsthand <laughs> how you guys work together and how, actually, how hard you're really working. Yeah. I mean... Papa mm-hmm. was up basically all night. Our producer. All you guys were. Uh, yeah. The producer. And yeah. Uh, uh, it's really cool that it's, <laughs> it's actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not doing too much. <laughs> yeah, Charlie I, has the chillest job out, out of anyone. Yeah, I appreciate the kind of work. All he words, does is just <laughs> sitting there talking and looking happy. Like me and my producers and everything. We're sitting there like trying to get shit done, like with schedules and everything. And he's just sitting there like happy all the time. Like while we're working, he's like, hey guys, watch this TikTok video. Like, Charlie, shut the fuck up. This is important. I know? appreciate yeah. the kind of words, so I, I really appreciate no. it. No, but Charlie, you're great. You're a great co-host. <laughs> very, <laughs> very thankful for you. Everyone has a But you're easy. Else. You're easy. Yeah, that's the part. I'm flexible. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a good thing. That's why that's the most. That's Wait, did I tell thing. you that the same day we left for the U.S., he called me and said, uh, do you want to go to the U.S.? Like, I, I had class the same time. <laughs> he called me and told me. That sounds go. about right. Yeah. <laughs> that right before class. <laughs> yeah. He was like, hey, Liam, I'm in class. Make it fast. I was like, we're going to the U.S., uh, in in a couple hours, he's like, okay, and he just. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you just run out of school? <laughs> did you just get up? I, I kind of did, yeah. I, it was my last class, so I mean, I just ended it. Quick. Did you get up like in the middle of your class and just run out of the class? No, the thing was, I was I was getting sketched out because I didn't know if I had to have a visa, like, even though I'm a Canadian citizen. Yeah. So I was like, I have to go to the bathroom, and then I call like, like the Swedish, the American, and the Canadian embassies. From the school, from the bathroom in school. Yeah, school? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like trying to like find out if I needed Esther. I didn't yeah. have to, so it was cool. But anyways, wow. we made it, um, and yeah. now we're here. We're, we're so. glad you got everyone. Um, loved Charlie from last summer. And <laughs> yeah, now Charlie's more Humpus. popular than I am over here. <laughs> Sucks. Hump us too. <laughs> Hump us too. <laughs> oh my god. No, everyone was excited to see Charlie again and and meet Humpus and of course yeah. see Liam. Mason, yeah. do you want to tell us about? Uh, the was like the surprise that you guys have for us that m- Liam messed up. Um, the, the, when we're the supposed game. to come over. Here. Oh yeah, because we we messed it because I I uh, lost my passport. 
which is also very kind of both both sides of the family. I think that comes <laughs> yeah. from actually the losing things constantly. Um, these guys have lost like three sets of Acura keys in the last yeah. uh, last few months. Uh, but uh, I wanted to talk about uh, your childhood growing up because you grew up with uh, Brookie, um, you Lolo, who, who Trent. Those are his uh, siblings. Yeah. So yeah. can can you tell us a little bit like how you grew up, wh- where you grew up, your parents? How was it? Sure, it was wild and crazy. Um, I grew up in High Point, North Carolina. Who you guys have been? To, you <laughs> yeah. guys have been. Yep. There. been there. Um, it's an interesting place, um, to say the least. Um, yeah, my father passed away when I was twelve. Mm-hmm. So then it was just so it was my was three early. three siblings: my oldest brother Trent, my sister Lolo Leslie, and. Uh, my brother Brooke and me, so yeah, we always had um, both of my older Trent and Brooke were both musicians, and um, Trent was in a high school band when I was kind of a younger kid. So we had this what was a playroom in the back of our house mm. that was like a kid's playroom, kind of like this, but in the back of our <laughs> yeah yeah. And so Trent later converted that into a music room with drum kits and amplifiers, and so there were his high school band, but then always people coming over to jam. And, and how old were um, they at the time? Um, he was, he graduated in like 19, like 1980. So, so he must have been like, I was, he's several, he's nine years older, eight, ten years older, something like that. So he was around like 16, 17, something like that? Yeah, yeah, when he was a teenager, graduating yeah. high school. Yeah. Or, or teenager. yeah. And um, so there were always people Gymnasium. over. Yeah. Gymnasium, yeah. sorry, yeah. Our, our, so our house is kind of basically like Grand Central Station. Yeah. <laughs> because you know everyone's friends were coming over all the time these guys who were learning to play or already could play yeah. music were coming over and um i mean even when my dad was still alive that was happening with trent's age group um his band and, and friends yeah. i want to say by the way i mean both you and lila are like musicians or yeah. she's she's been and she works in the industry yeah, right. i mean are you a bit disappointed that liam didn't go that path <laughs> No, I mean, you know, I yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he could sing. He could sing, though. <laughs> no, he can sing. That's that's the only thing that's not disappointing at all. I'm glad he's doing what he wants, where his passions lie. But uh, he does have a really good voice. Yeah, he does. I mean, I one day maybe he'll put it to use. I don't know yeah. about that, but <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I think he naturally has a better voice than I do, or. Yeah, like no, we maybe actually have Lila. A I don't know. Fucking he good has voice. A, think so? Yeah, he, I told you that like way back. You're yeah. like, I, I've never heard but of that But I don't before. think it's seriously because I just like, <clears throat> I just like, I, I'm not a singer. Like, I'm not singing all. You time. always sing like funny shit. <laughs> yeah. Like if he worked on it, stuff, maybe he should. He could do like a comedy album. Yeah, something. maybe Country should. Comedy. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> maybe, hey, maybe I'll break it out. D D D. Missy, you never tried MMA or wrestling or anything like that. A little bit of wrestling. He did. So, but I think he gets it really from my dad because my father was a serious wrestler. Oh, he and was? Yeah. He was a first all-conference wrestler at University of North Carolina, Chapel <laughs> Hill, where you guys went. Yeah. Man. And um, he was a badass. Um, yeah, he's a know, bad motherfucker. First all-conference is a big deal in any, you know, back then and today. So he was obviously like the top of the heap in wrestling. Yeah. In co- collegiate level, college level. And that's, um, like, that's big. So it was big, you know, um, because there's a lot of people that are into it here. It's a bigger sport. Just because of sheer numbers, there's more people doing it. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, he was student body president at Carolina. He was uh, he was a, a leader always in every in sports and all of aspects of his life. Mm. So that's always kind of like he was a I, World War II veteran too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You told me that. So yeah. yeah, heart lots to measure up to there. Yeah. Um, and he was a you know ran he went from the bottom to the very top of a furniture company. He. He ran and w- became part owner of, along with my great uncle. Um, s- very successful guy. He was um, head of the Small Business Administration for North Carolina. He got to get. He was invited to presidential inaugurations twice, and mm-hmm. really got to the White House. And yeah, a oh. lot of cool. Oh shit yeah, like that, that. I've actually he, seen he that. That's crazy. Stuff. Yeah, like there, there's a, there's like a there's like a letter that uh, he got sent uh, from Nixon. Nixon and Lyndon. Oh, yeah. no, no way. No, he, but he didn't Nixon. go. He didn't go. 
I don't, I don't think know. he went. He went to one. He was a, a Lyndon B. Johnson and then Nixon. Both <laughs> no offense to your grandpa, Liam, but who do you think he is? <laughs> <laughs> the no, press he, is he like, was. oh, hey, come over. He's like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was that dude. I, I mean, if, can't there, was, be if there was one guy who would do that, it would be him for sure. Was yeah, like I'll call him retarded for that. <laughs> no, I mean, I would have definitely cigars in his office. Like, <laughs> okay, that's yeah. pretty dumb. Yeah. But well, he, he definitely gets that fighting instinct from my dad, I think. Maybe from Lila's side too, you know. Yeah, Viking you blood, who, who knows? <laughs> he, he has it, but I think it's uh, it's kind of cool that the good part of him doing what he's doing in MMA is that I, I can see the, you know, maybe it's my mind wanting to draw that 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 uh, those strings together, the correlation. Yeah. But um, it's highly possible that the genetic thing is there for, because he, I mean, he's excelled in wrestling big time. Oh yeah, I mean, definitely. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, I saw Liam the other day. We went to this gym in Charleston. Yeah. And he was wrestling like these guys who were way bigger than him. Oh, I didn't know you did that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we did. yeah they were like, uh, you wrestled the coach, the main coach <laughs> for the for the practice. He was like 95 kilos, Yeah, I guess. which is like he 95 kilos is like, that's around like 215 pounds. I have no huge, clue. Dude. But he was huge. And he was like 40-something. Yeah. Uh, you wrestled this guy? Yeah, and, 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 and they, like, was, yeah. they started sparring, and Liam's wow. like, "Oh, he, crap. you go up to him? Uh, you go up to that guy? No, he, I think he went up. Yeah, to he, me. he went up to Liam, and then they started wrestling. I mean, he asked you, or if you just want to grappling wrestle? and like jiu-jitsu and stuff. And I mean, you were competing, like he didn't even he couldn't. No, but he was the coach, and he couldn't, he couldn't do anything. It was just that he was so big, like he could just like lay on me, but like he didn't do anything. Kind of like what I do. <laughs> 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 but uh, but but the but the, I was wrestling some guys who was like. Probably like 190, 185. What's that in kilos? That's probably like 85 kilograms, 80 okay. kilograms. Yeah, yeah. And you got them. Yeah, Did I mean, but uh, th they got me good work, though, because they're like so big, so they made it hard for me. <laughs> it was funny. I just sat there. They probably thought that I was some like amazing wrestler, <laughs> but was like injured. I was sat looking all like serious and stuff, but I was like, okay, this is dope. I didn't know anything. I was just yeah. looking at it. But I want to, apparently, they're going to have some D1 wrestlers come over soon, so I was going to wrestle with them. That's awesome. D1 wrestlers. Because right. I've always been curious it. Like the best how wrestlers my wrestling in the US. Uh, would fair, pair up against them. I know. That would be you know, interesting to see how Because I would up. love to wrestle here. I would love to wrestle here. I'd love it too. We should get you a scholarship at Carolina. Yeah. Amazing. What do you think about like Liam doing MMA? I mean, obviously, it's a dangerous sport, but. I mean, do you support him from the from the beginning, or has it grown on you? Um, I, no, I never <laughs> did not not support him. You did? No, I mean it's just you know I, I don't from the beginning. Of course, it's like I don't want him to get injured. Yeah. Well, but his thing is more because which is kind of funny because he comes at it from like more of a mom perspective. Like he's like, <laughs> oh, so, so he was the mom I, and the one, was yeah, the dad. Yeah, yeah, He's like, I just don't want him to get hurt, and oh, his pretty face, he can't get punched in the face. <laughs> And like and like you know stuff like that. And mom is more like, what? Well, it's also well, mom the mind. wasn't the biggest fan of it in the beginning as well. She was like, "Why are you gonna do that, Liam? That's so stupid. Like you're gonna go <laughs> in a cage and fight somebody. That's so fucking stupid. Like why would you do that?" I don't remember mommy being that way. I thought no, she, was she said like, that like the very beginning. She said that, but then like and how when she saw how serious I was about it, she's like, she's like, "You're just trying to go prove something. Like this is so stupid." Wait, Liam, how old were you at the time? You were when I told her, I was like probably. 12, 13. Yeah, so that is like, yeah, yeah. that's when he started. But I like, wouldn't because take my she, but child she didn't, she didn't think that. that like, she's, well, she wasn't thinking like that. My whole life has pretty much been this. Like, you know, my whole life has been this. Well, it started with judo and wrestling and yeah, of all course. the other. But this, all these know, things are a part of MMA. And I've right, always so. been fighting. Like, I've always. This oh, is God. Like Dude, my whole life. He was fighting. Like, he used to, we used to wrestle for fucking hours. <laughs> Excuse my French. Um, <laughs> when he was. Three and four years old, it started. Like, literally, d definitely four years old. And that Wait, what was drink, he doing? Like He wanted to wrestle all day long every fucking day. And <laughs> Against who? Me, all the time. <laughs> and he no, always, we would actually have, like, four-hour wrestling He sessions. always had to win. And if I didn't let him win, which Balls. I really did not, he would get so fucking furiously pissed, he wouldn't stop. He was like a little... He was a machine. I mean... I was it, not like that. <laughs> he's literally like... <laughs> I was not like... I, no joke, dude. He's been, like, a fighter... And a lot of it was play fighting. We would yeah, play yeah. fight all the time. and uh, But he, like, you could just tell. I mean, we would joke about it. His aunt, Lolo, and all of us, the whole family, yeah. like, oh, my God. This he's kid's a, crazy. He's, he's, well, he's a fucking obsessed. He's obsessed yeah. with fighting and wrestling. Yeah. And he used to love all the, um, 
the wrestlers, the American pro or whatever you call it. Oh, yeah, yeah, the pro fake pro wrestling. Fake pro oh, wrestling. the WWE? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, You like that? No, when I was like a kid. Oh, you did? I didn't know that. John Cena and all, like all those guys. He's a he was obsessed with John Cena. Yeah. Like he had we had little like the costumes and stuff for him. Imagine John if you were Cena a WWE costumes. wrestling instead of a UFC. Oof. I mean, no. you're not a UFC fighter now, but no, but like eventually. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be. No, it's stupid. been from. With the, you can come in with the cowboy. Well, hat. That'd be like a persona. <laughs> What's up, motherfucker? Well, it's funny. Like when you when he's that age, we we're like it went on and on and on. We're like, okay, that's maybe that's just a phase he's going through. Because all yeah. a lot of little boys like. Yeah, they're physical and they like to do physical stuff. Yeah, shit and fight and wrestle and, but yeah, with him it just it's, it stuck and it never went away. It only got, yeah. you know, more and more and more. Uh, especially with judo, led him into everything. Yeah. So it really opened. Judo was a door that opened opened up Pandora's box. Yeah, well, what you, I though. mean is like, cause mom mom was uh, like in the beginning she wasn't very supportive. She was more like she didn't understand like why I wanted to do this, mm -hmm. and I don't think she like understood like how much of this has really been a part of me, like, since I was a kid. Like, my whole life has been this, pretty well, much. Well, she, she wasn't the one that you were constantly wrestling. That was me. No, 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 that's the thing. I don't think she, she probably <laughs> Yeah, she, exactly. She but I think as soon as she understood how serious I was about it, and, like, you know, she watched a couple of my first training sessions, and she understood that, okay, well, he's a little bit talented, so if he works hard, maybe he could make it happen, you know? Yeah. So, that's when, true. When, when she saw how serious I was about it, I think she understood. And then you were, like, you were more of, like, that uh, angle, more like, oh, you, why are you going to do that? Because, like, it's – and you're also trying to get me to, like, go to college and do all these other things and, like, academic. Of course. I mean, that's, like, a parent's job. But I think now he's kind of, like, seen, like – he knows, like, where I could be and what my goal is and how hard I'm working. He knows how hard – he hasn't really seen it firsthand, though. I mean, I've been to your gym. A, a yeah, but, times. like uh, – I work, like, you haven't seen me, like, two, three times a day. Well, since then, you've progressed into a yeah. whole other level. I yeah. Mean, so, I'm, now I'm watching it from afar. We talk a lot about it. Yeah. I mean, we talk often every time we talk. It's asking him about training and him telling me yeah. how it's going and yeah. what he's preparing for, if there's a fight coming up, or, you know, what the next goal is always. So, that's mm. cool. Yeah. But, um, I mean, even just seeing you the January before COVID, going to the gym with you those few times, I could really see – how intent and intense, mm -hmm. um, yep. intent you are, and then how intensely you are training. And yeah, it's a goal. I mean, Liam. I mean, you never like really been open with your training before. I mean, you you were after yeah. your fight, but before that, like you'd never been t talked like openly about no. your training or anything. Like I didn't really know mm -hmm. how serious you were about MMA. I mean, we looked at MMA, but I didn't really understand that you were doing MMA. Yeah. Until maybe like a year after we, we mm -hmm. met. Mm -hmm. I mean, why haven't you really been talking about it before the fight that you had last year? I don't know, because it was more like work in the shadows until I have something to show. Oh, me. so you don't want to showcase anything before you were. Good. No, I didn't want to say that I'm a May fighter and stuff and I'm at whatever level before like I could be at a place where I'm happy where I'm at. And you're you know? confident that you show showcase your abilities yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That and, like, sense. for me, like, you know, like, uh, my last fight was a very big deal to show that. Mm. But, like, it was probably the biggest deal in terms of, like, show people yeah. what I've been w doing. But, like, accomplishment-wise, it wasn't the biggest. Like, accomplish accomplishment-wise, like, winning the national championships is bigger. Yeah, but, obviously, yeah. like, that's more of a hardcore fan base who knows about that. Like, uh, like fan base of wrestling. Yeah, sure. But, uh... Liam, were you any good at, like... Before you started training, were you, like, naturally good at fighting? Because some people that you know just have it in them. I I, I, I don't mean, like, mentally, but uh -huh. just physically, that they're, like, talented and stuff. So, like, if I met someone in my yeah in my size, mm -hmm. like, he might be better than me just naturally in fighting. Yeah. No, but the thing was... You think, were you good or did you have to train? I, obviously, he's training to yeah. get to the level you're in right now, but... I think I was that, a little bit good. Yeah. I was, I was a little bit talented. But, like, because the thing was, like, my, my theme growing up was pretty much, like... You as like soon as the kid is the same size as me, like I'll beat him up. Like if if, if when you were younger, yeah, like that's how it was. Like if if he was the Do same you size, think as that me, way as well. What? Do you always think that way when you're younger? Like, when I'll, I was I'll younger, beat him yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, always had that. That's what I mean. That was like I could of walk course. into a room and I would see like, okay, I'll beat these guys up. But then I kind of, <laughs> then I kind of got distracted because I have a lot of other things I do as well. 
And I kind of came, I kind of lost that. And I kind of just like accepted that, Hey, like I'm a pretty, at that point I was pretty small. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I mean, most guys would probably beat me up cause I'm small. Mm. And I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like, I, I'd never felt that before. Like, Hey, uh, like, what you mean? Know. You felt like vulnerable? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't well, like I can't say the vulnerable. Vulnerable. Yeah. I felt vulnerable. I didn't like having Vul- that feeling. Vulnerable. Vul- Vulnerable. 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 No, dude, I can't okay, say just it. don't say it. No, but I didn't like that feeling of feeling like, <laughs> hey, like I'm vulnerable, you know? Because I was like a little kid and I wasn't very big as a kid. I was pretty small, like around 13, 12, 11, that time. Mm-hmm. I was pretty small. Yeah. Like people would mess with me and I couldn't defend myself. I couldn't do anything. And the, I had been doing judo my whole life, but like I had taken a pause for a couple of years, so I didn't have it, you know? So that that's when I was like, you know what? That- Fuck this. I'm going to go and I'm going to train hard. And then I just trained super hard and until I could defend myself against whoever, what whatever size they would be. And well, then it just turned into this whole other thing, like, holy shit, like this is now a part of me. This is now something I want to pursue career-wise. Because in the beginning, it wasn't really about that. It was just more like, hey, this sucks. Like I'm. Was it, it was like, more like a confident thing. It was more like of a, yeah, I need to defend, be able to defend myself, and this is good training, and I've always loved this. But also just out of confidence, like, oh, Knowing that sure, you're yeah. in a safe space. So sure, yeah. And then it turned into like, whoa. Well, a couple of times yeah. guys challenged you at school like like it, like they do. I mean, you always – oftentimes you come across a bully. I mean, I did. I had gotten fights in high school and even ju- even junior high because even a bigger kid or a kid your own size decides they want to fight you for whatever reason. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even know why. Yeah. So, I mean, I got in fights too, and I was the same size as you were. Yeah. But I had done a little bit of wrestling, and I was also – um, a fullback and as a smaller guy, I was a fullback, mm-hmm. defensive, uh, not a, you know a, a striker on, in soccer. So I was yeah, used exactly. to kind of that defensive mentality. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's also a thing where judo helped him um, open the door to you know, and then people kind of challenge you, challenging you at school makes you determined to, in his case especially, learn how to defend himself and yeah you know, and then it went from to the complete you know extreme yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> sky rocks that. for sure yeah oh but i want to talk about a little bit about um just to change subject uh i want to talk about you lived in new york for a while yeah or almost four years almost four years four. yeah what, almost what years was that you, you lived from um end of the 90s into the early 2000s when i met lila okay and then how how's how was that period of your life? Oh, it was great. Yeah. It was awesome. I loved it. I Wait, think um, when do you leave? I was there at a good time. Wait, when do you leave the? Uh, I moved. Leave well, officially moved to Sweden in two thousand two before he was. So born. you lived in. He was born. I in mean, I'm thinking about nine eleven. Do you live there at uh, the same time? Yeah. Oh yeah. Really? I saw it all happen. With oh all really? Oh nice. Like, Damn. horrible shit. Yeah, it was terrible. Um, I was only like a mile north. I was in the West Village, and the towers were, you know, roughly due south of me. So when the first plane hit, the girl I was dating at the time, we, I think her mother called her, mm. and we went and when we wa- we got turned the news on, and we saw the second the footage. Actually, we saw Tower Two come down right from the from, window from the rooftop from Damn. from from her. Rooftop. What did you think had happened? Like, um. Did you understand I, like I thought, what actually happened? I thought it was what was happening was most likely it was a terror attack. And you thought that? Yeah, because I you mean, you think it was like a building because malfunction? We s- well, no, we saw the plane hit the second one on on the mm. on TV, and then we ra- immediately ran up because these were we were in the West Village. The buildings were about four, five, mm. six stories high max. Yeah. So we got we got up to the roof really quickly and um, saw Tower Two come down right in front of us. Shit. And th- and one of her neighbors was an attorney whose office was right down there, mm. near um, Warren, and one of the streets right there by the towers. Mm. And we were about to g- go down there. He and I Shit. were like, "Let's go, fucking!" And th- that was right before Tower Two actually came down. It was just such a hard to. The whole thing was so hard, hard to, to grasp. grasp. Hopefully you didn't go conscious. down there. You, did you go down? I did go like down there. Like a cloud of um, dust. Just I mean, yeah. I mean, like if you would have gone down dangerous? there, you could like yeah, choke. You could have died or something. I went down there by myself the very the first like six a.m. seven a.m. the next morning by myself. I got through all the because they had barricaded all the streets. Yeah. So you and they had cops and everywhere um, military, um, secret service, and obviously everything there because at that point everyone knew. I got all the way down through the barriers. I took these. 
you know, disposable cameras like yeah. Bladen's taking now on a trip. I had a, a three of those that were still had film left on them, mm. and um, he knows what those are. So I took <laughs> I, I, I took them with me, and I, I was w- such a daze. It was such a weird thing. I don't even know why I did, but I did. I got all the way down to Warren Street, which is right there, and then I got on this West Side Highway bridge, which mm. is an overpass, and I could see what was going on. And it was me and two other guys on this bridge, random dudes. And then suddenly all these military guys and cops and firemen start running up the West Side Highway, which is over here. My neighborhood's here, West Side Highway. Towers are he- were here. Mm. And so it was very close. Uh, so you were near building, building 7 before that came down. I think it was 7. Honestly, I can't remember. It must have been because it came down. The next day, I think when I was I was down there. You I came don't know. down the next day. All I know is something happened. Something happened where there was a, a huge what felt like an explosion, um, and we were up on this overpass bridge. It's a pedestrian bridge. But both know. the towers already came down. Yeah, or was there one left? No, they had both come down. I have pictures I took of. Oh so really? I, so those cameras, those disposable cameras, I took pictures which were. You know of the some of the structure that was still up from I think Tower Two. I honestly can't remember because it was such a daze. But um, I took all these pictures. I have those three cameras, which I've never developed the film. So I still have the cameras, but the film is I've never developed it. Yeah, um, I kind of so want you to because I I kind of want to see. I really looked at them after that. No, the cameras it must are, have just been like bad. I never developed the part. film, so they're still in the cameras. Oh shit. Um, so then that I don't actually want happened. To see we them. ran. Yeah, uh, I guess, but it's horrible. But I mean, no, it is horrible. But like, yeah. I mean, but like, you have like a uh, things that yeah, you've documented things that nobody's ever seen before. I mean, uh, other name. people took pictures, but you know, when I got all the way down there, I took those pictures. I don't know how they came out because I've never seen them, obviously. But then, um, when that whatever it was that happened, explosion or a building coming down, I can't remember. It was all such a daze. Me and these other guys were on this uh, this pedestrian bridge. All took off, and we, I was running up the West Side Highway, mm. trying to get the fuck out of there. Because I saw like National Guard, um, firemen, army officers, like all running up the highway. So we were like, "Fuck, this is not good." If they're running to get away from it, then something. Oh, bad's those happening. guys ran away. Yeah, from they were running up, th- and I was on this bridge, and they come running. So we all oh, scattered. Then you, oh, yeah, we then all you ran up the West Side up. Highway, not knowing what the fuck. We thought maybe it was another, another bomb or another, t- you know, a terrorist attack again. We didn't know. And then you see all these reporters, like above, like maybe Fourteenth Street, up just north of where my apartment would be, mm. would, was lined up across like the barricade, like looking down with their giant telescope lenses and cameras filming what what you know whatever they could see from yeah. that point because from i mean no side, no yeah. cameras were allowed journalists weren't allowed down there photographers weren't allowed down there i just snuck down there because mm. i was determined in my mind to find out what to to believe that this shit had just happened yeah because it, it just wasn't it was so hard to process yeah I, mean, I saw people jumping out of the buildings and Damn. horrible from my roof from my girlfriend's at the time's roof um Fuck. it was horrific and i mean it was a war zone I lived, like, my apartment. But that must have been so weird, like, I mean, because it wasn't just, like, one attack. It was, like, two, three. And then they're trying to get to the White House, and but it it, it didn't go, it didn't get yeah, there. Yeah, we're in, like, the Pentagon. Yeah, the so, Pentagon. So when the first tower was hit. Well, they did hit it. Was there, like, a no doubt in your mind that this was a terrorist attack? Or, or did it have to, like, be the second one to, like, actually I yeah, the first one understand, I think okay, people this is not accident. This is not accident. This is definitely something. The second one kind of on. sealed the deal mentally for me because then I saw the tower. When I saw Tower 2 come down in front of my eyes, that was, I knew. Something's wrong. Well, you know, we wrong, saw the yeah. first one, the re- the replay of the plane hitting the tower, Tower 1. Yeah. When we got up, we woke up and turned the TV on because her mother called her. I think I'm pretty sure that's what happened to mom woke us up and like holy shit what's going on um of course and then i could so then when tower two came down there was a major uh telephone tower on on tower two Mm. so no one had i had a landline back then and a cell phone my first cell phone i think no one of my early cell phones so you couldn't call in or out for a couple of few days and i was supposed to go on tour the very next day oh that was canceled and we had to 
we postponed, I think, a day, but we ended up going. But that was a big decision. Do we leave? Do we go? So we, like, took our girlfriends and put them in the van and got the fuck out of yeah, there. Yeah, I was supposed to take but it I mean, did you want to stay in New York? You didn't uh, want to stay in New York. I didn't want to. Did I felt bad leaving in a way, but also wanted to get out of there because I didn't feel safe. Well, I mean, like, the following days after 9-11 happened, like, what did people do in New York? Like, because I know my dad, he was in uh, Frankfurt in uh, Germany going to Canada for for a uh, for a wedding. Was his flight canceled? <laughs> that, yeah. it, it got canceled, and he well, that's it looks a bit foreign. So, yeah. I mean, he, he had a hard time going there. I think he missed the, the, the whole thing. But, I mean, what, a like, lot of people I, were just got out of there, you know. I mean, because mo- many people didn't, there was no way to communicate because of the tower being down. Um, yeah. I don't know if that was the case for everybody, you know, in the outer line, in the boroughs. Um, but, I mean, you know, a lot of things were shut down for for a long period of time. Yeah. Um, we went on that tour, like I said. So we were, it was a pretty short tour. I think it was only maybe 10 days. Mm. Um it wasn't a long one. And it was back. It was down to the southeast. You know, I mean, it was. How are, how are the. But this is one. Sorry for interrupting you. But this is one of the things that I think is like super interesting because like I, I've heard because I was obviously not alive at that time. But like I've heard that like the unity that happened after that. It was yeah. huge. It was huge. Like every the whole country got together. Definitely. That's true. It was like pretty united. Very much so, because that the only good thing that came from that horrifying situation was Some people did fighting. come together versus right now we're so split up divided a lot of that's the media creating the division, I think, but that's a whole other subject um yeah, it did bring people together, definitely yeah, I didn't know who I was, who I was talking to. It might have been uh of the wedding, but that like when it happened that when my dad was in the airport. Everyone just got together and started praying and stuff. And they're not even, like, really re- religious in Germany. But, like, it was a huge thing. I mean, the whole world just shut down. And mm-hmm. obviously, like, the aftermath. Just look at the airport security now. It That's changed a, yeah. everything, like, yeah. on every level. It changed my viewpoint on the world for not all good ways, but, yeah. um, unfortunately. but uh, That's it, how it is, it obviously, when you go through stuff like that. Yeah, it was, like, it can't, it's, uh, I don't even, I mean... Thousands of other people, or millions of other people in Manhattan, New York went through it too. So, but yeah, I was close to it, and I, s- I saw it more than I probably wanted to wanted to see. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, it was, I'm, it was I'm sad. I mean, yeah, it's uh, terrible, but like it's still interesting to hear that from your perspective because, like, I've asked you about it before, but you haven't like touched on it too much. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of want to have you on again on the podcast because, yeah. like, you yeah, have a lot, a lot of funny stories. stories. Yeah, you have a funny and fun stories. I mean, yeah. we've been road tripping for some, like, quite a while. I mean, last year we did. Oh, yeah. And wow. you've been telling a lot of funny shit that we didn't, we didn't get into this podcast. But yeah, but we'll have to do doing. a part two. Let's I do think. it. We'll sure. do it maybe season after the upcoming yeah, season. Yeah, hopefully, probably. hopefully. Yeah. So, uh, but, I mean, thanks, Dad, for coming mm-hmm. on. Yeah, I hate to end on that note. Yeah, I don't want to end on that <laughs> note. Well, but speaking wow. on island, we're what, done. What a downer. That was yeah. a downer. But but I think <laughs> people need to hear it, though, because uh, like uh, especially people who weren't around then yeah. or people from different countries because they don't know how truly fucking terrible it was. Yeah, so I think it it's awful. important to talk about it. I think I should give you those cameras and let you get them developed. Maybe Humphreys can help I, you do it. I want, you, I want to. I have them. So I have them in my, my place. Yeah. Charleston? I'll let you guys... You know, they may not be good anymore. They're so old. I mean, you could cool. use them. You could use them. We'll, we'll get it done. But uh, anyway, I mean, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, guys. And, uh, thanks, man. I look forward to possibly doing it again. I mean, good job. Actually, good really shit, good man. job. You did a really good job. Thank you.